a, a little bit about God, the, the hysteria and the panic on the left, primarily on the left, uh, although there are people on the right who are unhappy about this, but the, the panic and hysteria on the left about Elon Musk buying Twitter. Um, I, I mean, there really is a panic. Remember, this is the left that used to be, used to be, in Ayn Rand's day, certainly, used to be uh, pro-free speech. It, it, you know, one of the arguments about, uh, you know, that the, the right wants to violate our rights in one way and the left wants to violate our rights in a different way, but the, 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 the virtue of the left was that they were the party of free speech and, and, and uh, really the right was pro-censorship pro-limits on free speech uh, and, and pro-limits pro on exercising our right, our First Amendment right. And I don't think that is flipped because I don't think the right is pro-free speech, but it certainly has become true that the left is anti-free speech and that the left has completely uh, rejected it. And it's not, it's not in terms of just kind of legal uh, free speech from the perspective of government uh, because I think that in the United States is still at least at the federal level, pretty well protected. It's protected by, by a, a court that has been, uh, over the last, I'd say, 10 years, maybe one of the best courts for free speech issues um, around. And, and here I give credit to the conservatives on the court that have really been defenders of free speech. Uh, but the left has, it, it has become an advocate for a culture of limiting the conversation, of limiting what's acceptable, of 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 limiting what is expressed uh, in uh, 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 it, it, on public forums, at universities, and of course on social media. And what what Elon Musk has said is that on Twitter, when he buys Twitter, he intends to um, he, he intends to expand what is permissible uh, in terms of uh, in terms of on Twitter again it's a private company I think the previous regime on Twitter had every right to decide what the limitations they wanted what things they wanted and did not want to be expressed on Twitter and I think Elon Musk as a private uh, as, as a new owner of Twitter has a right to define those parameters any way he wants as I've said often before I think he's going to discover that it's a much trickier uh, much trickier to do it than it is to argue for it, but but we will see. I might be wrong, and he might know exactly what he's doing. But what is horrifying and amusing at the same time is kind of the panic on the left, as if uh, you know this is somehow some kind of uh, uh, some kind of disaster that is going to befall the country the fact that more people will be able to express themselves on Twitter. God, the world will end. And it also is bringing out, you're seeing, partially with this misinformation council or board or whatever they call it uh, that, that the Biden administration is creating, what they view as misinformation, which is the kind of stuff that they want off of Twitter, and it ultimately I think they want the government to somehow ban or censor or limit or, 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 or whatever. Uh, hard to tell exactly. We'll see how this evolves. Um, so it's what's going on right now is very, very revealing of the left's kind of really horrific anti, um, anti-speech, not necessarily, uh, and, and now with the with this board, their inclination to censor, at least the, the, their inclination to uh, to um, flag things they don't like as misinformation. It really is things they don't like. So as part of the campaign to kind of um, make Elon Musk look bad, uh, the New York Times wrote a, uh, a, a profile of Musk. Um, and... I mean, the profile is fine and there's nothing in the profile that really should cause anybody to, oh my God, he's a monster. They couldn't find, they didn't find the dirt on him that I think they were looking for, So, which was interesting. But here is a sentence from uh, this article. And it, it's shocking. 
Um, and it, it, it truly uh, um, it's shocking and it's 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 upsetting. Mm -hmm. um, the, this is the great New York Times. So what was a long time ago the great New York Times? Just just the the logic and the incapacity to think that this couple of sentences reflect. So here, as you probably know, Elon Musk is an immigrant. Uh, he immigrated to the United States from, well, from Canada, but originally from South Africa. He is in South Africa. And here is, um, here is the, the, the sentence about him growing up in South Africa. Elon Musk grew up in a South Africa that saw the dangers of unchecked speech. Now that should just make you fall over. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Grew up in a South Africa that saw the dangers of unchecked speech. I mean, South Africa under apartheid was a country of censorship, of government censorship. South Africa under apartheid was a country, was a regime of unfree speech, not unchecked speech, unfree speech. Indeed, uh, the newspapers in South Africa, who I think many of them were anti-apartheid or, or, or dismissive, would often show up on your doorstep with half the article, with a number of articles blanked out, blank, black, covered up, all the text covered up. It was a way for the, for the newspaper to, to show you what government censors, censors had censored. So in South Africa, the government would not allow speech that objected to apartheid. And to censor it, indeed, if you, if you spoke up against apartheid, if you demonstrated against the party, you went to jail. Uh, and I know this, uh, I know this because, I mean, I know this for a lot of reasons. You can read about it, you can study it, but as it happens, it's a little personal. My parents were both born in South Africa, like Elon Musk. Uh, my parents hated apartheid, as Elon Musk, I think, did. And they left as soon as they could. They emigrated out of South Africa to Israel. Uh, my uncle, my mother's brother, was actually an anti-apartheid activist whose speech was silenced, silenced, and who actually sat in jail. Um, uh, the, the government actually jailed for his opinion, for his speech. And he was ultimately kicked out of South Africa. He was deported out of South Africa, even though he was a citizen born in South Africa because of his anti-apartheid activism and was forced out of the country. He ultimately um, uh, had a leaf, uh, had a, uh, lived in the UK and ultimately um, settled in Portugal. But so, so what are you talking about? I mean, listen to this. Again, Elon Musk grew up in a South Africa that saw the dangers of unchecked speech. No, it saw the dangers of government censorship. It continues. That's a colon. I'll, I'll read it again. Elon Musk grew up in a South Africa that saw the dangers of unchecked speech. Colon. Apartheid government propaganda fueled violence against black people. Yeah. But that was government propaganda. That was government having a misinformation council board and censoring objections to their falsehoods. Indeed, governments are responsible for most propaganda. Governments are responsible for much of the misinformation. It, it, it's unbelievable. More speech, certainly the government allowing more speech, and then just a culture that allows for more speech and a culture that allows for people to objecting to uh, uh, what's conventional, to objecting to the consensus, to objecting to what the government argues, is a culture that is likely to get rid of apartheid. So indeed, if you're anti-apartheid, 
What you want is more speech. So here they're turning it all upside down. Elon Musk grew up in South Africa that saw the dangers of unchecked speech. No, it saw the dangers of censorship. Apartheid government propaganda fueled violence against black people. True. But that's government propaganda. You want your government propaganda? Musk didn't experience that. He grew up in a bubble of white privilege. First of all, what is that even, you know, do we really know that? From my understanding, reading a little bit about other people who written about Musk, uh, he, he didn't like apartheid as a teenager. He objected to it. It's one of the reasons at 17, he left South Africa and, and, and never looked back, never went back, you know, went to Canada. Um, he probably did grow up in a bubble because I know all of my relatives grew up in bubbles, fearful of, of the people that were being oppressed. But from what I've read, Musk actually was friendly, uh, had friends who, who were black and, 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 and had a very negative opinion about apartheid. So what are you trying to imply here? And look, he, he, was, he was born into the system. He didn't choose it. As soon as he could choose, as soon as he could impact change in his own life, he left. <laughs> what more do you want? So the New York Times is trying to smear him based on something he had no control over. Associate him somehow with apartheid. It's, uh, it's truly, it's truly hard. It's hard to understand what these people are thinking. Uh, no, it isn't, actually. It's easy to see that they are not thinking. They're just not thinking. There's no thought involved here. They'll say anything, they'll do anything to smear him. Why? Because he has a vision for a private company that's different than their own. They used to defend uh, Twitter's right to 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 can't you know not to carry Trump or whatever, based on the idea that they were a private company. Funny how the left was protecting property rights, but now that Elon Musk is buying it, and maybe they won't block the people that the left wants them to block. Now it doesn't matter that they were a private company; they should do what the New York Times tells them to do. It's stunning, right? Stunning. <sighs> yep. And New York Times, by the way, is doing very well financially. 9.1 million subscribers at the New York Times. So whatever they're doing, it's working for their business. So, And they're a private company. They can do what they want. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.